In British Columbia, climate change is expected to bring more intense, short-duration storms. We prize our salmon and our natural streams. The last thing we want to do is destroy these habitats, but urban development, without proper practices, can do just that. The risks to habitat will get worse with climate change. When we build neighborhoods, we also increase impervious area that creates stormwater runoff. Climate change will bring increased rainfall intensity and more risk of stormwater damage. Before development, forests and grasslands in our region absorb water and soak it into the ground. This replenishes groundwater, supports our wells and summer stream flow. After development, roofs and pavement, if flowing directly to stormwater pipes, increase the amount of surface water into streams. And this runoff reduces the amount of water infiltration that replenishes groundwater supplies in summer. In natural forested watersheds, stream beds are relatively stable with in-stream erosion and sedimentation in balance based on the erosive power of the mean annual flood. In unmitigated urban watersheds where tree and soil cover is replaced by pavement and roof and where storm drains go directly to the stream, the flow from pipes into watercourses changes quickly in tandem with the amount of rain. High flow events repeat several times a year in urban watersheds. It's like having the mean annual flood repeat many times a year rather than occurring just once. And these flows create more energy, more erosion in the channel. Because of these repeated high flows in urban streams, natural rates of erosion are exceeded. I've seen urban streams cut down as much as equivalent to my height, which is a meter and a half. And you see this bank behind me that's a, a fresh erosion scarp. You can see the uh, tree roots that have been exposed due to the erosion. Down below this erosion site, where the stream grade flattens out, the pools fill in with sediment that was eroded from up above. Fixing these streams, stopping the erosion and removing the sediment, protecting property from landslide or flooding, is costing developers or municipalities in British Columbia millions of dollars. Fortunately, there are better ways to develop. Stormwater detention ponds or constructed wetlands like this one can reduce the flows of water and the risks of flooding and in-stream erosion. To keep streams flowing in the summertime, we need base flows. We need infiltration into the ground. To help with that, we can use techniques like pervious paving or rain gardens that take water from roof or pavement and soak it back into the soil. Along roadsides, we can use infiltration swales, either with trees and shrubs or a grass surface, to take the water from the roads and the parking areas and infiltrate it back into the ground. Infiltration into soil is very effective. It takes out pollutants and delivers clean, cool groundwater to streams. It's this slow seepage that keeps the small streams running in the heat of the summer and the fall. But care is needed in infiltration practices and design. Some locations aren't appropriate like areas where there's contaminated soils, or locations that are above unstable slopes, or at buildings without footing drains. The size and details of the infiltration facility must be designed for local rainfall patterns, for the soil percolation rate at the site, and the amount of impervious area that drains to the facility. The use of green infrastructure practices is increasingly common, Many leading developers and local governments are using these innovations as a part of low-impact urban development to protect ecosystems right now. To adapt to climate change, we need to increase the use of these techniques across our urbanizing watersheds, including in street and home retrofits or reconstruction wherever feasible.